Alright guys, so today I'm going to be talking about the inner workings of 3D printed R2-D2 um, and we're going to be talking about some of the electronics, uh, the motherboard, stuff like that, just the more te tech type stuff, um, how stuff mechanically works, that sort of thing. So if you're into that, this is your video to watch. I'm going to try to make it fairly quick, but um, I want to do it pretty detailed. So. Um, if you want to watch, go ahead and do so, otherwise if this isn't your thing, then now is about the time where it's going to start getting fairly techy. Anyway, so I guess I'll go ahead and start with the head, because uh, this is a fairly involved piece, but not quite as much as the body since I've had to limit stuff so far. It's not done by any means, but we're getting there. So anyway, we have the lighting, we have lights. We have an LED underneath this, which flashes a bunch of different colors, like the logic lights do. Uh, not incredibly detailed, but good enough for me. We have an RGB LED underneath here. Um, if you watched any of the other videos, you would have seen that this is on. Um, and we have a UV LED underneath the hollow projector lens, which is, in my opinion, is fairly cool. It's not the best thing to put underneath here. I've seen people put, you know, better stuff, but since this is so small, that's really the only thing you could put under there. I was going to put some sort of projector, but there's just not enough space. Um, and of course we have his main eye right here. And underneath that we have a camera. So unfortunately, this is a 720p camera, but um, it unfortunately died. Um, the This chip down here, which I can't really point to, you can see my finger under there. That chip right there unfortunately burned, and so this camera no longer functions. Good news is I have another one that is a full 1080p on order, so that's all good. We're going to replace this one with a better camera. Anyway, um, anyway, I think that's probably about it for the top here. Um, moving on to the mechanical bit that actually turns the head. So what we have here is a gearbox. Um, this is out of a remote-controlled car. I was going to 3D print one, but I already had this laying around, and there was already a motor attached to it, so I thought, you know what, we'll just use that. Uh, sweet and simple. So we have some wires and a connector soldered onto it. I'll show you where all this stuff plugs in in a minute. Um, and then we have the actual gear, which is turning the gear on the head. So as you can see, if I turn this, the entire head moves. And um, uh, any of you guys who are looking carefully, you will notice that this gear, if it went all the way around, would hit this board. So what I've done to prevent that is you can kind of see I have a limit switch. You can see it easier down here. I have two limit switches, one here and one here. And basically, when you turn the head too far, so I'll rotate the head a little bit more, you can kind of hear, hear that click, and that switch will disconnect the uh, data line going to the motor controller so the head can only move this far so this gear doesn't go in and hit this board and cause problems which is a good thing because the head moves very very fast in fact I'm probably going to have to slow it down some because it's so incredibly fast when it moves um, also as another sort of feature here uh, this gear is not, you can kinda see how it's moving it's not tightened down on there and you can kinda see I have a strap of rubber here that's so that um, basically if somebody's turning the head, as you can see when I'm pulling that back, it doesn't actually engage the gear. You can kind of hear it clicking. And that's so that if some jerk decides to come and turn the head, that hopefully they're not going to damage anything. Um, I think that's about it for the head. Um, so we'll go ahead and move on to the motherboard instead. And this is where the electronics really start coming into play. Like, I, like the name suggested, this is basically all of the um, really important electronics. So at the top here, you see we have two um, 18 mega 32A uh, P-PU chips, and these are microcontrollers, and I believe they're 28-pin microcontrollers, and they are in a dip socket. Um, and uh, basically, these run the show. So these do everything... Um, and as you can see this wiring harness that comes off of the this goes to the head and um, this literally does everything um, I don't know what to say the, these two controllers do everything um, we have the status LEDs we have a potentiometer for adjusting the light threshold so when I'm adjusting for object tracking 
Um, in the video, that's what that potentiometer does right there. We have two optocouplers in also in IC sockets, and uh, we have a huge heat sink right here. And this is for these two LM7805. Uh, these are linear voltage regulators and they're super inefficient because of linear voltage regulators and if you ask well why didn't you just put a switching regulator in there it should be pretty obvious that there's like no space on this board to be putting a switching regulator because you need um, at least a good sized coil and some other uh, passive components to go along with it I would have done it but uh, this is just simpler and easier, and, I ha and I'm guaranteed that these are going to be a very precise 5 volts. So one of these is responsible for these two microcontrollers. The other one is responsible for stuff like the camera and the powered USB port and that sort of stuff. So this heat sink can get quite hot. As I'll show you later, there's a fan that blows air directly down over the heat sink, and it also helps to keep the microcontrollers cool enough that they get really that warm. And right here is all the audio. Um, this is the amp section right here there is um, a low pass filter on here and then um, right next to it this isn't part of the amp right here but this is the video sync chip and this is responsible for taking um, the pulse out of the video signal and feeding it into the microcontroller so we can have on-screen display um, and that will be going over a wireless connection to the remote control uh, flipping to the bottom here, we have a couple more uh, opto-couplers or opto-isolators, whatever you want to call them. It's basically just an LED and a photo transistor in one little package. Um, and these are for driving the motor drivers, by the way, so I didn't mention that. The, these two up here are for the head, and these two down here are for the feet. And I did that for a couple of reasons, but mainly because I'm afraid if the motor drivers get back driven or something like that that we could end up killing the microcontrollers and these are just so cheap it's there's no reason not to put them in my opinion um, so that's about it for the motherboard I know this video has already gotten pretty long but like I said I wanted to do it fairly detailed so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to his main body and uh, this is where stuff gets a little bit more interesting and as you can see all of this wiring it's ridiculous there's more tucked up underneath here that's hot glued the wiring management is just it's a very hard thing to do in such a small package i don't i've never seen um, a one-third scale r2d2 that is this complicated and they've put this much crap into because it's just so small it's difficult to get all these wiring and all of this stuff into such a small package so i've gotten a lot of features in here already and i want to put more i don't have space for very many more but we're gonna try so uh, i guess i'll start with the servo here this is a 3d printed servo by the way um i'm in i did design it so i'm going to at some point be making a video and releasing the files for this um, and this is just based on those really cheap um, DC motors that you get out of, like, remote control cars and stuff. I'm sorry, hopefully you can see back there, kind of see the base of the motor right, right there at the tip of my finger. It's also black, which doesn't help. And then, of course, the motor driver is right here. And that's a very simple circuit right there, but... It's another full H bridge for driving it back and forth. And if you wanted to add a potentiometer as well because you needed the uh, actual positioning of the server, you could, but I don't need it because this basically just opens and closes the arms, and that's it. So uh, it's good enough for that. It does have quite a lot of torque, but you can see how I'm moving it manually. That's because I intentionally did not put the servo horn on there very uh, tight. I did put a little glue, but it's not gripping onto the rod, and that is for the exact reason that I'm moving it right now. If somebody comes and grabs these and pulls it open, I don't. I want these to just move. I don't want um, them to snap off because otherwise, there's you cannot back drive this servo because it's so geared down. So uh, that was an important thing for me. I didn't want to get this broken. Um, moving on, these four transistors here are an in an H-bridge configuration and these are driving the head. You can kind of see I have these two connectors here and this blue wire and this red wire here are the input for the motor driver and um, the switches just plug in and then they disconnect whichever side to prevent you from, uh, for to prevent the head from driving like I was uh, mentioning before, driving too far in one direction and then this is the 
uh, plug for the actual motor. Behind it is another motor driver, and this is just single direction for the feet. Uh, so not too complicated there. Basically just a transistor and a diode and a resistor. I mean, really not that big of a deal. Um, moving on down here, we have the main wiring harness, which goes to the batteries. Um, so there are eight batteries. Uh, these are, I believe, 1.5 volt cells. I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that. I have to look at the data sheet. But anyway, so there's two of them here, two of them here, another two up here. And of course, another two right there. And those are all wired in series to give us uh, 9.6 volts, I believe. Uh, but fully charged, it's almost like 11.5, I believe. So that's not bad. Um, let's see, what else do I have to say here? Uh, the fan, this fan right here, which you can kind of see, it's a laptop fan. And that is responsible for blowing cool air over that big heat sink on the motherboard right here, as I was mentioning before. Um, this big black thing down there that is the speaker uh and you can kind of see if i move around here that's a pretty big speaker way bigger than it needs to be but you know who cares i put it in there anyway because i had it so um these are all the wiring harnesses that plug into the actual motherboard and you can see it's quite a lot that's quite a lot of connections to plug in but uh, these two are for the left stick on this RC receiver. This is meant for a plane. So um, I had to do a little bit of hacking on it to get it to work properly. As you can see, it's got servos directly on it. So I did have to do some changing to get it to work for my purposes. But basically, these two wires are for the left stick. And these two wires are for the right stick. Um, and those are read as analog inputs, and then the microcontrollers convert them into uh, outputs for, say, this one is for the feet. Um, let's see, that's the video. This is the audio connector. This connector right here is for the servo up front. Um, this one is for the head, etc., etc. And then this is the power connector. I did use a PC power supply and a uh, four pin connector for that. Um, it's not pinned out the same way though. I will make note of that. Um, let's see, what else do I have? So we have the base control knob for the amp. We have the volume control knob. The gain control is actually on the motherboard right there. Probably should have put another potentiometer, but I didn't have one. Um, this switch to the left here is for power to the motherboard. This one to the right, as you can see the LED turns on. Uh, that one is for all the motor drivers, so the servo, um, the head and the feet. Um, this switch puts it into charging mode. So if I press that, it'll be put into charging mode. And basically all of the onboard electronics are turned off. And then it's straight power from the connector up front. I'll go ahead and turn them around. From the connector up front here where it charges. So I have um, wherever the plug went. Not prepared here. So I have this plug. So you can see that fits right in there, and then you plug your charger right into that. So it's basically an adapter, and uh, so I can just charge it with a regular nickel metal hydride battery charger, which is what these are, by the way. These aren't lithium batteries. I don't really like lithium batteries, so I didn't use them. Um, let's see, got a little bit better view up inside. You can see there's quite a lot of space down there, which is pretty much all taken up by the motherboard. There's a lot of space on the side here. Uh, which I plan to put the video transmitter in. Um, let's see what else we got here. We have the video output right here. So if you plug a monitor into that, you get composite video out from the camera along with the on-screen display. Uh, right here is the audio connections, which are mixed together. So left and right, we have a powered USB port, of course, for charging my phone um, or really anything else that takes USB power. It's just powered nothing special this switch right here switches the input of the amp so at one point i was going to put a radio or something else but right now it's kind of a useless switch so i'm not entirely sure what i'm going to do with that um, i think though that that is about it if you have any questions or comments of course leave them down below oh wait i do have one more thing I'll give you a look at the feet here without breaking any of the detail bits off. So the feet, it's basically just a single gear and um, 
I didn't have Ninja Flex at the time of making this, so this is just rubber that is wrapped around, and then you kind of see I hot glued it, and uh, I think I did a pretty good job. So these are actually wearing down, so I'm going to have to get some Ninja Flex or something else on them. And the other one is exactly the same, except opposite. And then we just have these cheap little DC motors on them. And those are surprisingly enough, although I'm putting way more voltage than they're rated for and probably way more current through them, so they're going to burn out quick. Anyway, I think that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a very nice day.